And on that green billboard, there's a long Māori name. That's the name of our pa. And it's called Te Whakarewarewa Tanga o Te Ope Tāua Awahia. Say it again. Ope. Ope. Tāua. A. A. Wahia. Now we shall say it backwards. <laughs> the park is well known right throughout New Zealand. Throughout the rest of the country, the wider part of New Zealand, this place is more commonly known as Te Whakarewarewa. Okay, so we break it down in half. Throughout the rest of New Zealand, that is what they call this place, Te Whakarewarewa. Now here in Rotorua, in our city, we simply call this place Waka. Waka. So we break it right down. Now you notice the WH makes the F sound. When we say this particular word, it makes the W sound. If it was to make the F sound, you know what, you'd be walking around saying all that. <laughs> if we did not have any of this activity, we would be on very shaky ground. There would be nowhere for the pressure to be released. The two plates below us, the plates that cause the earthquakes, the sub... <laughs> It is illegal. It is illegal to bore down and draw from the geothermal waters coming from below. In the early 1960s, 1960 and 1961, private homes, hotels and motels throughout the district, they started to bore down, they put bores in, and they started to draw from the waters below us for electricity and heating. In 1983, the government stopped it. Due to the effect it was having on the tourism industry, a lot of the activity Geysers, pools, boiling mud started to decrease in size and activity. It just goes to show what happens when you play with nature. So the government stopped it in 1983. Everything started to come back up to its natural state. Ready? Are we ready, Mr. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with all the steam that you see, Coming through the earth with all the steam, certain pools, oh sorry, with all the steam, in certain areas where the ground is flat and there's steam coming through, mm -hmm. you only have to dig down about two or three feet, you've got natural hot steam coming through. Mm -hmm. about 15 seconds left, you might want to put some post on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to make our way around to our geysers. Okay, and we'll let the eggs, hopefully they'll cool down a bit by the time we get them. When we get to the geysers, okay, you're going to sample one of these eggs. Oh, you can do it down there, are you not here? Yeah. No, we'll do it up at the geysers, just so they cool down. There's, okay, there's some areas there. The geysers. Imagine a sulfur smell here. No, not, not too strong, but noticeable. I say the uh, weather is just beautiful. Just beautiful. Could be more comfortable. There we go. Tap me or something, I'll get out of your way. Big yellow smears on, of sulfur on the rocks. Perfect. Are they perfect? Are you a good cook? Yeah, very good. You get a lot more activity coming from the mud pool when it's raining than when it is fine. So it is the opposite to the guys. The hotter the day, the more active the guys are. The wetter the day, the more active the boiling mud. So the formation in the mud pool will change all the time with the weather conditions. It does not look the same. 